Hi, and thanks for joining me today. So I've got the Tonic Studios Excellent Easter Stampin' Die Set, and I was actually pretty lucky to get this because I was kind of hemming and hawing about whether to get it, and then it sold out. Um, because sometimes, I think this is one of their showcase sets, and sometimes the showcase sets hang around for quite a bit, and but in this case, it just went super fast, and then I was on the Tonic Studios website just randomly browsing and I saw that it was back in stock so I bought it right away so I feel uh, definitely very lucky to have gotten it because it was sold out for a period of time there and I don't have a lot of Easter stuff so that's why I thought it was such a cute set to get and what's nice about it is that it came with a lot so you get this full this is a sort of A5 size stamp set and then you get the die set as well and really interesting is that the dies aren't just coordinating dies to go with your stamp or to cut out your stamped images they're actually all standalone um i do think the egg shapes will cut out uh the eggs that are on the stamp set but otherwise they are um they can all be used uh independently and that way you can actually just augment, you know, your stamped images with die cuts and um, kind of mix and match and use them both. So I love that they can be used independently and together and they just sort of, um, you know, work together. The other thing that this came with that I'm just now realizing I didn't use was the uh, shaker card blister pack. So I think it came with 10 of the shaker blisters and five in the full egg and five in the cracked half egg shell. Um, kind of unfortunate. I totally forgot about using those, but I will definitely have to um, maybe play with this uh, set again um, and actually make good use of those. But let me show you uh, the cards that I did make using this set. So I've got uh, my first card here is a flat card and I was going for sort of a little Easter parade and I did die cut the banner and the banner um, when you use the full die cut it actually only cuts the banner a banner that has a pole about that long so it ends right where my thumb is if you want to extend your pole like I have I just did a partial die cut so I lined up the top of um, let's say this is my cutting plate if the die, let's say the die ends, you know, here, um, I just lined up my cutting plate like that. So it doesn't actually cut all the way across the edge of the die, but rather it leaves that portion still attached to your paper. And then that way you can then um, go back in with scissors and then cut um, a pole that's as long as you want. So um, so that's what I did, and then when it came to this um, part here, I just cut my pole off <laughs> a little bit, and then uh, cut it off a little bit down here, and then glued um, th that piece so that it looks like he's holding it. And, um, and it is a little bit weird because dimensionally this is higher than the bunny's hand but you know when you look at it from afar it looks fine <laughs> so um so there's that and then i did put a, a little bit of dimension with this not a ton because it's supposed to be a flat car card but i did try to curve up uh, the edges a little bit and i used i think a glue dot to to give it just a little bit of a lift um for the coloring i used my faber castell watercolor pencils and still getting um, some practice in and these images when I saw them it's part of the reason why I bought this set is because the images are a really good size they you don't need too many of them to make a nice focal um, you know image or scene on your card and they have a lot of open areas so you can really get practice with um, kind of the highlights and shadow and for watercolor I really like the open areas because then um, for me, I'm still kind of learning how to control 
you know, the water and where everything goes. And so um, that's one reason why I really like watercolor pencils, because you can really color in and put color exactly where you want it. And then you still have that fun freedom of once you uh, put a water brush to it, you can still move that color around. And um, with a nice open image like this, it's kind of easier to, um, you know, stay inside the lines um, if, if that's what you want to do. So here I did uh, ink the image in, I think it was Nouveau's Metro Gray, just to um, keep it nice and soft. And then I, um, for the background, so you might have seen the masks that I had uh, on the carrier sheet for the stamp set. I masked everything off and then I used my uh, Faber-Castell Gelatos to actually put the sky and the grass down. And that was using the pastel um, set of gelatos. So I really loved coloring these images in so much that I colored it in a second time. <laughs> I'll put them side by side so you can see the difference. Um, this one is colored using alcohol markers. And so you can kind of see the difference in just vibrancy, the intensity of color. Here I did use a Memento black ink for my um, stamped outline because uh, the alcohol markers are so saturated and vibrant in color. And um, in particular, the rabbit is, is very different just because I don't have that exact color. I don't have um, like a huge set of alcohol markers, so kind of had to make do with what I had. And um, for the background, I did the exact same thing, the sky and the grass, except I also have the bright line of um, gelatos. And so the blue and the green are from the brights. So you can see the difference between um, the colors. This is from the pastel set and this is from the bright set. And I did the exact same thing with the banner. So I drew this with like a warm gray. So just filled in where the shadow would be on these banners. And then the Hop To It Easter sentiment does come in the excellent Easter set but it, it's a straight um, sentiment. But when you put it on your acrylic block, you can bend that a little bit. You can bend your stamp a little bit and then that way um, you can kind of stamp on a curve to sort of match the curvature of the banner. So that's what I did there. And then here I added some music notes because I had some stray ink marks <laughs> that I was trying to cover up. So I just took a black uh, glaze pen and drew in some music notes. But, um, oh, I forgot to mention, I also used the black glaze pen on the eyes. And when that was dry, I went over that with a white gel marker. So that just brings, you know, your critters to life. Um, it makes the eyes... Uh, kind of glisten a little bit and then the white adds that little bit of uh, you know highlight to the eyes so same scene two different coloring techniques and I did say I liked coloring so I went for a third coloring of this exact scene this is technically a layered card because I did mount this on foam but could easily be a flat card as well and here what I did was, I'd never done this technique, but I've seen it um, done, so I wanted to give it a try. I used, uh, for my rabbit, Walnut Stain Distress Ink. Um, it's the only brown that I have. And then Mustard Seed for the little chickies. And basically what you do is, um, or at least what I did, and I'm no expert at this technique, but this is watercolor paper. I spritzed did a light misting of water onto the paper. Then uh, I inked up my stamp and stamped it down. And then I spritzed it again just to um, move all of that ink. So the first stamping is just to lay down color and it's sort of how you color your inked image. And on the bunny, um, there was this really cool effect, especially in the face that I really liked, where it almost looks like it just created the shadows. Because basically, it looks like what I did was I sprayed at an angle. This was totally accidental, by the way. So <laughs> it just happened to turn out this way, and I liked it. But um, 
So I think I must have spritzed it at an angle for this particular part and all of the ink that was, you know, this area of the face just spread that way and it almost creates sort of that shadow um, effect. And, um, and then with, once that's all dry, you want to make sure it's, it's super dry um, because if it's not, then you get, you get this happening where it's a little smudgy but if it's everything is super dry and maybe take a heat gun to it if you want to really guarantee that it's dry and you don't want to wait um, then you can ink over it again using the exact same color and then you get a really nice crisp um, outline of your image and so this was distress oxide walnut stain and then this happened um, to be a distress ink, not distressed oxide, but distressed ink and mustard seed. But I did the exact same thing. The only thing is, is that because this had some more open areas, I actually took my um, water brush, watercolor brush, and just moved some of the ink around a little bit just to spread it and get a little bit of, um, a little bit more coverage. But otherwise, the same technique. So, you, you know, you get a really different look out of it, but it's um, kind of interesting. And then here with the banner, instead of using a die cut, what I did was I, you might have seen this when I showed the stamp set. I'll bring it out real quick. Um, so I die cut, I took this banner die and then I cut it out of foam. And then I used this foam as a stamp. So um, on the back side, I just put some removable tape, mounted that onto my acrylic block, and then I inked up this side of it. And um, I think I use a Memento Dewdrop ink pad in, I think the color is Toffee Crunch. And um, so that got me sort of the color of the banner. And then I took a brown uh, fine liner pen and um, just outlined it just drew in the rest and then I think I, a black glaze pen I just drew that in as well so no die cuts on this so this could definitely be like a very very flat card um, if if it wasn't mounted but because I was using so much water on this card the watercolor paper did get a little bit warped and so um, anytime that happens I, I just use foam and a generous amount of it <laughs> to to get that stuck on um, and flat again once it's on your card. So three um, of the exact same scenes but just you know different coloring techniques. So it was really fun to just experiment um, and play with these uh, different mediums. So those were my flat and layered cards. Then for my interactive cards, I decided to make some flip it cards. And this first one is actually using a Sizzix um, set. And it's, there's the number if you're curious. I don't know if they're still releasing these because um, I think what happened is Stephanie Bernard, who's the designer of this um, die set, I think she was a designer for Sizzix, but now she's gone out on her own and she has a, a brand on her own brand called Stamps of Life. And so I think because this is her design, um, Sizzix hasn't been releasing more of them, which is unfortunate because this is actually a system. So it's their drop in flip its, uh, different from their other flip its, um, where you have all of the dies that you need and um, just the one shape, whereas this one was designed as you have um, the card base and then these different shapes are separate dies that you drop into that framework. And um, the idea being that they would release other shapes sold separately, but because the other shapes don't need the full framework, they were cheaper. And once, you know, it does require that you have the base set so that you have that framework for the card base. But then once you have that and you want different shapes, then you just buy those little add-on packs and drop in the particular shape for um, the cutout. 
super cool idea, super cool system, but I think by the time they released this, um, they didn't have too many opportunities to release uh, very many of the drop-ins before uh, she went out on her own and um, started designing for her own brand. And so kind of unfortunate that um, that there aren't, or at least I don't have too many more. I mean, this does say these are, these are the other dies, the add-on dies that, so they do have a couple that uh, will go along with this. And then I have a couple of their original versions, which are really specific to that shape. Um, but what was clever about the drop-in set was, you know, you have that framework and then you just drop in different pieces. So the subsequent add-on uh, sets are going to be, uh, were cheaper. And um, it's just unfortunate that they don't, they aren't able to kind of continue that. I guess because she, it's her licensed design. But what you get is a really cute card, and I'm using a lot of elements from a couple different places, but all the eggs on here and the sentiment, the Happy Easter sentiment, they, those did come from the excellent Easter Tonic Studio set. The little banners are actually leftover die cuts from a different card making um, session, so I thought they uh, were kind of cute and wanted to use them. So that's one flip it. And if you don't have the Sizzix one, but maybe you're a Spellbinders fan, <laughs> they released a flip it um, die set as well. It's one of their, I, I don't subscribe to their kits, but uh, they are available after the fact and sometimes they go on sale. So when they do, um, if it's something that I like, I, I pick it up um, just as it uh, on a one-off basis and so in their version of the flip it you actually don't see you know what the shape of the uh, flip it you um, won't see that until you actually open it up so theirs works a little bit a little bit differently and these flowers and the little uh, leaves here that does come in the spellbinder set so super cute um, kind of different, but if you didn't want to use it this way, you want to use it the more, well, I, I consider this the traditional way because that's the first style of flip it that I learned. So you could always do that. You just take the spellbinders one, turn it around, and then you've got your, you've got the exact same, pretty much the exact same thing. Or if you have the Sizzix one, but you want to use it the way spellbinders, um, prescribes that you use it again you can just flip it over so you have um it was kind of interesting to see that um just because i would never have thought to to do that with the Sizzix uh sets but now seeing this i was like oh that's actually it's different it's definitely um pretty cute so it's kind of nice to have the option of doing it either way if you like so two different uh styles of flip it's and then if you have don't have either of those, you can make your own flip it. And I'll um, link in this upper corner here to a video tutorial that I have on how to make a custom flip it using any shape die that you have. And so here I took the die from the excellent Easter set that is actually technically the basket. And um, when you open it, I am trying to pass it off as an egg. <laughs> And the idea being when you open it, the egg has broken and the little little chick is um, popping out. So um, so that's one thing that one way that you can kind of create your own flip it and uh, if you don't have those other sets. The nice thing about having the uh, flip it sets, whether it's the Spellbinders one or one of the Sizzix ones, is that when it comes to your mats and layers, you get a much more um, perfect, you know, mat and layer. So you can see this kind. This has like the perfect border around the edges. It's perfectly uh, shaped and sized. Whereas um, it's a little bit harder to achieve that, especially if you don't have um, like nesting dies where you can go one up in size. So here what I did was I used the exact same um, Easter basket die and I cut that out from 
my mats and layers here, but you can see it's, you know, not the white, the amount of white that's showing is not equal because um, technically it should be, I should be using a die that's slightly larger, but um, you use what you have. And I think at the end of the day, it, it still looks okay. It still looks just fine. So it's just, you know, a level of detail that maybe a crafter would pick up, but if you were to give this card to somebody, I don't think they would really notice. So, um, so I thought that was kind of cute. So three different uh, ways to create flip it cards. Then my last um, cards are my pop up cards, and so here is um, Happy Easter, and this is actually um, from. A die set that I bought on Amazon so there's no it's kind of one of the no-name brands but I liked it because it's it's large so compared to the one that comes in the in the excellent Easter tonic set um, I just like that it's, it makes more of a statement um, and then I've got a border uh, embossing folder. This is an Anna Griffin one, and it's it's old. It actually came with my um, cuddle bug, but I thought I'm bringing out my embossing folders more, and in particular my border ones because I never used them because I just never knew how to. So I thought, okay, this is the time to to try to bring it out, use it, and um, and figure out how to <laughs> incorporate that into my cards. And so with this pop up, when you open it, the egg. Uh, ducks down and the little chick pops out from under so um, and then we've got the Easter basket here so this um, actually comes from the Karen Berniston pop and swap die set and I've been you've probably seen me use her die sets a lot for my pop-up cards because they're just really well designed and they really make um, creating the pop-up mechanism just you know a lot easier and faster so that you can really put your creative energy into the design of the card as opposed to into making the mechanism because you could definitely figure out how to do this and um, measure and cut things um, the mechanism out yourself it's not too terribly hard once you kind of deconstruct it and figure it out but it's time and then you have to kind of write down all of those dimensions <laughs> so that you can replicate it if you want it to make more than one and certainly if you were only going to do it the one time then maybe that's the way to do it but if you want to make more than one it's a lot easier and faster if you have her die sets because um the one die will create the the entire pop and swap mechanism. And then she includes other dies in the set to decorate your card with. And these are really general pieces. And so you can um, use this throughout the year for any occasion. Um, and then you, know, you, you can really focus on the design aspect of your card and not the, the mechanics of the card. So here, this entire panel is um, all dies that come out of um, the Karen Berniston set. So the Love You, uh, the scalloped uh, rectangle, and then even the rectangle frame is a die cut, as well as the little, the little hearts. And um, with the Chicky this time, I actually stamped in um, Gina Kay's Sandy Beach, I think is the name of the color, and it gives a more no-line coloring effect to it, and I also use my watercolor pencils on this one. Then, kind of enjoyed it so much I made a second one, so two very different, um, basically the same design, just different looks, different papers. Um, here I use glitter paper for the back of the egg. And I used a um, more ornate um, border embossing folder. I think this one's from Crafter's Companion. And here, um, the sentiment, instead of stacking it in shadow layers like this one. So here's three layers, three different colors, but staggered to give that shadow effect. This is three layers, all white, 
stacked right on top of each other. So slightly different, um, different looks, but the same concept of having um, the little, the little chick come out. And here's um, just a difference between stamping in black versus stamping in the um, sandy beach for the outline. So with the black stamping, I um, I did outline the die cut with a black marker afterwards and that just cleans up any imperfect fussy cutting but here because um, there wasn't going to be like a strong border I when I did the fussy cutting I actually left a white border just so that it, it kind of stands out um, from the back of the card better but um, they both they both look fine it's just you know whatever look you're you're going for if you want something that's a little bit more um, um, soft or something a little bit more striking but they're actually both with uh, colored with watercolor pencils because uh, I've been really enjoying my watercolor pencils of late so those are um, two of my pop-ups and then my last card again will be a pop-up and using the same sentiment down here and this is paper from I think it's a first edition uh, paper pad but I don't remember the name of it I just really liked the colors and the watercolor um, kind of soft look to it and I was trying to replicate that in, uh, in the bouquet a little bit but when you open this the little bunny swings out and is presenting you with a flower as well so there's a little bouquet of flowers and you open it up and the bunny pops out and with the bunny I also colored in uh, with watercolor pencil and um, used that same Gina K Sandy Beach ink and this definitely looks like no line coloring because of the color of the bunny so that line really does um, it doesn't disappear as in you know the water just kind of absorbs it or melts it into with melts it with the rest of the coloring but it just is a little bit less um, a lot less noticeable given that I use a, a similar shade of um, brown for the uh, watercolor pencils that I chose. And then with the flowers, what I did was um, I actually used my gelatos and I did a very similar technique as um, this where the first stamping is just to get color onto the paper and so what I did was I, I sprayed my stamp and then rubbed the gelato over it and then using my finger I rubbed the entire stamp so that um, that gelato really does kind of emulsify and, and uh, the water dissolves it and then I stamped that down and so that just gets you you know the wash of color um, in the shape of your stamped image and then you let that dry completely and then you go in for a second stamping with the exact same gelato in the exact same color and this time just using less water and that's the part that's a little bit hard to replicate I haven't quite dialed in on just how much water um, so it's a little bit of trial and error because if you use too much water, then you get that messy, blurry look, which is great for when you're going uh, for the coloring in uh, step. <laughs> but when you want to try to get a really crisp um, image, you don't want as much water, but you need some water because the gelato itself as a media, it, as a medium is um, kind of dry and thick because it's almost like a crayon. So you need a, a just enough water to emulsify it enough to to give it a crisp image. So this one um, happened to be the one that turned out the best, but here you can kind of see my varying <laughs> degrees of success with this um, method. So here I got a really crisp image and I wasn't intending for that because <laughs> that was a first stamping, but it looked really good so I didn't want to mess with that. So I'm going to call this a white flower with blue shadows. <laughs> and then here um, I was able to get decent coloring and 
um, kind of a decent outline image. Um, and then a lot of times though, the second stamping just wasn't super crisp. Um, in some cases that worked out okay because it's still a soft watercolor look. Um, and then in some cases I did have to double stamp and you can kind of tell that. So, you know, I'm still working at it. It's still um, a technique that that is a work in progress for me, but it's still super fun, um, whatever the result you end up with. And this is the, um, happens to be the stamp set that all of those flowers came from. So it's a Hero Arts set. I'm not exactly sure. I do have the dies that go with it, which um, for me is a blessing because I'm not super good at fussy cutting, but I don't know the name of it. Um, it is kind of nice though because, you know, you get, they're all kind of small, but you do get some couple that are a little bit larger and you have some that are the full flower and then some that have the flower head that's separate from the stem, which you can stamp separately. And then um, for this part, um, this is actually just vellum, but it's vellum that I um, used this embossing folder and it's a Tim Holtz one. It's kind of nice because it's got um, smaller, like smaller dots. So I just ran this vellum through with my embossing folder and it's funny because I actually happen to have a strip here so you can see like this is a different embossing folder that also has dots but there's like two different scales so this is larger more spaced apart and this is smaller and since I was going with smaller flowers I, I used my smaller one and um, and so that vellum is just a nice kind of soft touch to it and I did um, I did slip inside my vellum on the bottom portion, I had some extra die cuts from this card, these stems. So I put those, you can't tell, but I put them down under here just to have color in here to give the illusion that there's stems, there's green stems that go all the way down to the bottom. Um, even though you can't see it, they're, they're there. And if they weren't, I think it would be noticeable that um, these flowers end right around here because <laughs> these these flowers from the Hero Arts set I mean, they don't have long stems so the longest stem like ends right here I think so to get some color all the way down here I just I just stuck some of these die cuts <laughs> into my little um, my little flower wrap here so that's this card super super cute um again that's the karen berniston um spinner square pop-up die set so if you like doing pop-up cards and um you know you're gonna make them you know occasionally throughout the year i definitely think um her die sets are are well worth it and this one specifically or this design i've i've done this um, several times myself by just hand cutting the mechanism because there's quite a few tutorials out there on how to do this exact style and I think a, a few stamping up demonstrators have done it and so you can always measure and, and die cut it yourself um, but in a lot of those tutorials it's I think three different pieces that you have to put together whereas in the Karen Berniston die set she has one die that creates the entire mechanism and then the rest in the 10 piece set um are just decorative and and very you know general purpose you can use them for um however you like or not at all if you like so you know the little photo corners those came in here um the um rectangle comes in here then you've got some decorative um, panels as well and then even a little um kind of a chat bubble uh, die. So a lot, a lot of um, really easy to use um, general purpose elements that you can use for other cards too, not just her, not just her um, pop-up cards. So 
These are the Easter cards that I created using this particular die set, but I did make a lot of other Easter cards because um, what I'm doing this year is um, for every you know holiday that I've been making cards for, I've just made you know a few handful extra. And what I'm planning on doing is at the end of the year, um, bundling basically an entire year's worth of occasions into a gift set for um, my two grandmother-in-laws. Um, one of them, she lives in a senior facility, so she doesn't really have access to, you know, go to stores and pick out cards. And and so I thought um, I gave her a uh, a small set of cards last year, but I think uh, they were more holiday cards. And this year, I thought maybe I'll give her like a couple cards for all occasions throughout the year. And that way, um, you know, if there are a couple people she might like to send out cards to throughout the year, she'll she'll have them for the different occasions. And um, my other grandmother-in-law, she. Um, well, hopefully by this time next year, <laughs> COVID isn't quite as much of a deterrent um, in getting out and about, but um, I thought it only fair that she also get a set of, uh, you know, year-round cards too, and so so that's what I've been doing, and um, so I've got another video, uh, which I'll link to at the end or in the description box below to show some of the other Easter cards that I made. Thank you so much for joining me, and if you like this video, please consider uh, subscribing to my channel, liking, sharing, commenting, um, all of those things definitely helps uh, my channel grow and hopefully um, helps other people discover it. So I appreciate if you've um, done any of those things, and especially if you've ever used any of my affiliate links. I don't really earn much money at all <laughs> on those, um, but whatever I do earn, I'm always very grateful because um, every penny does help because it just goes right back into craft supplies. <laughs> so thanks so much for joining me. Until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Bye.